FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is 6 2 20. Well, elections coming up. We've had a lot of recent events, to say the least. Uh, we've had the pandemic and the lockdown. We've had riots uh, uncontrolled around the country, especially in Washington, D.C. And, well, what is that going to mean to the election? Does that give uh, the presumptive uh, Democratic nominee uh, Biden an advantage here because he's not president? Or is it really an advantage for President Trump uh, to assuming that he can bring these riots to heel quickly and get the country back under control? Well, that's really the issue. Uh, we got Kelly Sadler with us. And Kelly, you are uh, America First Analyst and uh, your Communications Director at America First Action. You were formerly a special assistant to President Trump. We really are thrilled to have you here to get your viewpoint on what's happening. And right before we start, uh, just for all of you out there, if you got any questions for Kelly or you got your opinion here of where Trump stands in the election, we'd like to hear from you. Why don't you email us kl at kerrylutz.com. That's kl at kerrylutz.com. Well, Kelly, thanks for coming on. So we've got like all the troubles of the world. I feel like uh, President Trump is is Job, where everything has gone wrong from what was once a, a very successful presidency. Where does that leave us for the next election here? Well, I think this is unprecedented times uh, between the coronavirus and now the rioting that's breaking out across uh, in these blue states. Uh, you know, it's a, it, we're in rocky territory and uncharted territory, to be quite blunt with you. However, I mean, we feel good about President Trump's you know, chances for re-election. We're the, you know, the number one PAC, uh, the official PAC that's supporting his re-election. And, you know, the president is a law and order president. Um, you know, you have the mainstream media running around, uh, you know, basically saying the president, where is the president on this issue? Where is he with these rioting? Um, you had him deliver a speech um, on Saturday where he, he, you know, he sympathized with, you know, uh, the killing of a black man, quite frankly, uh, by by the police in in Minneapolis. Um, and he offered consolatory remarks that were not covered by the mainstream me media. He's activated the National Guard. Um, he's labeled Antifa as domestic terrorists and wants, you know, so anyone who gets arrested as an Antifa uh, member can be uh, prosecuted under the domestic terror laws. He also... Um, you know, basically invited in a bunch of governors today into the White House where he, he quite frankly criticized a lot of these blue state governors uh, for their passivity on dealing with these with these protesters. And I don't want to call them protesters. I want to call them rioters yeah. because there were a lot of peaceful protesters across this country who gathered to protest the death of George Floyd. And I don't think there's a single American out there who wasn't just appalled to see that eight, min eight minute video clip of that officer and, and the three other officers standing by him and just watching his life being taken away from him as a, as, a, as, a, as a woman who believes in the sanctity of life, uh, very much so. I mean, you can get second chances in this world, but you can't get a second life. And so we were all appalled um, to see that video. And so peaceful protesting, absolutely 100%. But then their movement got hijacked by, you know, what looks like these organized uh, progressive groups like Antifa um, who have, quite frankly, uh, destroyed the small businesses um, from a lot of in a lot of these minority communities, uh, businesses that have been shuttered for two months because of the yes. coronavirus, who are just looking to get back up on their feet. Um, so this is a terrible thing. And you can't have you can't have mayors and you can't have sheriffs. And you can't have governors saying, we'll let these these rioters, we'll let we'll let them burn out. They'll burn themselves out eventually. And this 
will go away. Uh, that is not what the president believes. Um, and that is why he was so forceful with them um, on the phone today. And I want to just point this out. Most of this rioting is going on in blue states with, yes. you know, under blue governance, uh, governance and that, that blue, you know, the progressives and the Democrats are saying, just vote for us and you'll live in a utopia. Well, I'm sorry, this is not a utopia. Yeah, far from a utopia, as we know. And really, you you did have sporadic uh, violence in Florida and Texas as well, but nothing like what happened in New York, what happened in Washington, D.C., that panacea of blueness, and in L.A., for sure, and, of course, Minnesota, which is a state that's very much in play, or was very much in play in the upcoming election. you got to believe that law and order is going to be a primary issue, in which case you've got Joe Biden who can't really remember what day it is and doesn't know the difference between an AR-16 and an MR-14 or whatever crazy uh, numbers he's come up with. He's not really confidence-inspiring when it comes to law and order, is he? (laughs) Well, no. I mean, did you hear what he said today? He went to a church in um, Wilmington, Delaware today, where he said that uh, officers should not shoot to kill, that the way that we're going to solve, you know, the corruption with the police force is if they, you know, shoot a perpetrator in the leg or something. Uh, This is ridiculous, especially when you look at the stats from, uh, you know, just annual stats. I think only like under 65 people are killed by lethal force um, that are unarmed by police officers. I mean, most most people who are shot and killed by officers are 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 with perpetrators that have guns that are trying to shoot and kill the officer. I mean, this is not a way to get rid of, you know, the systemic racism or whatever in within the police force. This is a bigger issue than that. There are good and bad actors in every profession in 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 our lives. Right. I mean, there's good and bad yeah. lawyers. There's good and bad police officers. There's, you know, good and bad protesters. There's, you know, the protesters that are out there peacefully. And then there's the rioters and the Antifa. So we got to look at this through a broader spectrum. And there is no, unfortunately, one, you know, size fits all cure um, that can that can fit all situations in all scenarios. Yeah, for sure. So we look at this Antifa group. They've been a problem for a while. They've attacked innocent people in the streets. They wear masks in particularly Portland, Oregon. They seem to have been aided and abetted by Mayor Wheeler there. What Mm -hmm. is President Trump going to do about these guys? And what's he going to do about Oregon? Yeah, well, he's already uh, labeled them as a domestic uh, terror entity. And of course, that is going to the the left is up in arms about that, uh, that that's not a a legal action. Well, I mean, we've got a we've got uh, this group Antifa looks well organized and it's well funded. Um, And so if the mainstream media, uh, if the lamestream media would do anything, it begins the bottom of like, where are these bricks? Where's the money? Yeah. Where's the money? I mean, if you look in Washington, D.C., what happened last night is there's there were bricks that were placed out I for know. these rioters to grab and to and to, to throw through shop windows. Where is this coming from? And there's a lot of uh, even in Minneapolis and all uh, these different, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this cities who have had these violent protests. It, a lot of them are not even from the city. Right. Then itself, it's like people are coming in and there seems to be an organization around this. And that is what the DOJ is going to get to the bottom of. And it allows, you know, the DOJ to create a task force of which they have done under Title 18, Section, you know, 2331 to look at kind of the origins of Antifa, who they're getting funded by and how they're organized, because they are definitely organized Um but it's 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 how how have we had all of this like literally from Thursday to Sunday we've had one protest start that started in Minneapolis that's now in you know several cities, several cities across America. Yeah, it's very clear they're organized. We've seen the pictures of the pallets of bricks. We've also seen where police have found cars full of incendiary devices, gasoline bombs sprinkled around the areas where the riots were going to be. Um, You know, riot control isn't really a new art. Yes, it's developed over the years. And I think 
that uh, Mayor Giuliani was one of the uh, best at keeping these situations from blowing up. When he became mayor, there had been two major riots. One was a police riot uh, right before he became mayor. And they developed systems where they actually got the management, the upper officers in the police department out there on the front lines with the officers to make sure that the thing got handled right. And yet this seems to be something that no blue state has figured out how to do. And it's it's discouraging to see a lot of kind of these uh, the first responders. You had um, the Raleigh police chief just this morning say that she's not going to put any of her policemen in harm's way um, if this rioting happens in Raleigh. Well, I'm sorry, but what good is the police force yeah. if they're not there to protect innocent, you know, victims and businesses, and if they're not going to stand up to these rioters. I mean, what good is a police force? You need to uphold the law and order. And the president has been consistent on this message. I think that's why he was so irate today um, on his call with the governors. It's like, we you can't, that'll only embolden the protesters. Um, you need to make arrests and you need to make them very visible. And we've got documented tape on a lot of a lot of these organizers. I think the president just a few minutes ago tweeted one of these tapes out of of an organizer from Antifa. Like, here he is. Go after him. Make the arrest. And let's set an example that this will not be tolerated in our country. And, And for their own political survival, you would think that these blue state governors would would want to do this. But what do you think is going to happen when they don't do it? Because they're really on the side of Antifa, certainly in places like uh, like Portland, Oregon, where they got mm-hmm. their start. What is President Trump going to do then? Well, you know, this is something that we've got to separate a little bit of the narrative. Um in the fact that Antifa seems to be be consistent of largely white, adolescent boys, men, um, progressive socialists. They're not Black Lives Matter. And you had more of a Black Lives Matter um, that was peaceful protest. And you have actually seen Black Lives Matter start interrupting um, Antifa saying, no, don't throw the bricks through the window. We're going to get blamed for that. Not, mm. not, not you guys. We've got to separate these groups and what they're going for. One is Antifa is is a total anarchy. Um, they want their you know Bolshevik revolution, and that's what they're out on the streets trying to do. They're they're targeting these um, like you saw in L.A. They're targeting these high end, and you saw in New York stores like Louis Vuitton and 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 printing out capitalism is bad and whatnot. And they've hijacked the Black Lives Matter movement, which was which was about, you know, police brutality towards black men, um, which was which is, you know, an issue that that we can resolve in this country. You've got these competing narratives. So first is to make sure that who we're going after is is we're not going after the peaceful protesters. We're going after the anarchists, which is which is Antifa. And I think you're going to see a lot of action, you know, today, maybe coming announced from the DOJ. I know that uh, William Barr, uh, A.G. Barr, uh, has said that he's talking to the DOD um, in terms of cracking down on, you know, these domestic terrorists. So I think there's going to be a lot more to come in the in the next few days uh, if this rioting continues. Well, we can only hope here, Kelly, we can only hope uh, the riots uh, is it. Do you think it's uh, well, the pandemic supposedly was having an effect on the president's reelection? Do you think uh, the riots are going to sink his polls? FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Osino Resources is a Ross Beattie-backed gold exploration company in mining-friendly Namibia. Osino's district-scale land package is situated near two producing gold mines, one of which Osino's management team previously developed and sold to B2 Gold. Osino's founders and management are experienced mining professionals who have already successfully developed and sold two companies in the past seven years. Osino has a tight share strength Structure, and with its current treasury, it can self-fund the advancement of its gold discovery into at least 2022. This is an exploration company with drills turning that you'll definitely want to pay attention to. Osino trades in New York under the ticker O-S-I-I-F and in Toronto under the ticker O-S-I. To learn more, go to OsinoResources.com. That's OsinoResources.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.
I don't think they're going to sink his polls. I think that a lot of people can look at their televisions and understand what's happening um, and that they we don't want to descend into the governorship that these blue states want us to descend into. I think that there's a lot of pent up frustration. Right. Mm-hmm. We as we shut down the American economy uh, just three months ago, you, we would have had this interview and I would have been completely bullish at the president's prospects. He you know, he got exonerated from impeachment. He mm-hmm. the economy was the best in the world. You had black unemployment at its lowest point in history. Uh, It was an amazing, amazing time. And then this pandemic struck and the president made the right, you know, he did the right thing at the time listening to the scientists in terms of saying we need to, you know, we need to, you know, flatten the curve. We need to stay at home. So, I mean, that's what we did. And then when he said, "Okay, it's time to reopen now, Uh, you you know, we've got the supplies that we need. We've got the ventilators, you know, we don't have the vaccination, but we got, you know, the testing that we need now, the PPE that we need now. You saw in these blue states that they didn't reopen. Right. Mm -hmm. And and, and you you have to look at that. Was that politically motivated or was that motivated on the science? And looking at the science, it looks seems so it seems 100 percent political. political. And now you have these now you have this rioting that's breaking out in these blue states. And you got to ask yourself from these progressive. Aggressive Antifa domestic terrorist group. You got to ask yourself, oh, gosh, uh, they hijacked uh, what was a legitimate concern, a terrible thing that happened. Um, and, and, and is this is this political or is this uh, is this something other than that? And I think with Antifa, it's it's purely political. All right. So two things here. Number one is against the shutdown for any state, red or blue. All right. Mm-hmm. But they did it. So, you know, you live with it. But these blue states that wouldn't reopen, they've got millions of their residents unemployed, trapped in a lot of substandard housing, can't mm-hmm. go outside, can't go to the beach, mm-hmm. can't go to the park. Isn't this like a big contributing factor to the whole riot scenario that came down? If it's not a causation, it's a definite correlation. And I don't think that anyone has any common sense would say otherwise. Um, yeah. And and look at I mean, there was pent up frustration. And that's what I'm talking about. And mm-hmm. and now with these blue states, you're seeing this massive these massive protests and these massive and, and no one's six feet apart. I mean, yeah. it, Antifa is like it's it, they have an advantage by wearing a mask at night. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so no one can can properly identify them. But uh, I mean, you're you're absolutely correct. I feel like I feel like since Thursday, coronavirus and the pandemic that it is has been completely erased. Yes. Um, now, no one cares about it. It's like there doesn't we don't. I mean, that's we the end be of the lockdown. Smaller, yeah. Yeah. It's the end of the <laughs> lockdown. We couldn't be in crowds larger than 10. But if you want to go out with thousands of your fellow you know, Americans, <laughs> then go ahead. By all means, I mean this nation is a little upside down at this point. Yeah, well, it took a it took a police killing and uh, mass riots to end it, but it was going to end, and I thought the social unrest was coming in any event because I think that's what they wanted. They thought it was going to help their cause. Now, one other thing I want to talk with you about the pandemic. We know now, and we really knew from the beginning, Kelly, that elderly mm-hmm. people in nursing homes, assisted living personal care homes, whatever you want to call them, they were particularly vulnerable. Now we got governors again in blue states. And what do they do? Uh, Governor Cuomo in particular, they send infected COVID-19 patients they get out of hospitals into these nursing homes and senior care facilities. And surprise, all of a sudden in New York, you we can't really tell because they started lying about the statistics. Yeah. It appears 10,000 people died there, thousands in in places like Pennsylvania, in Michigan, mm-hmm. and other states, in New Jersey, Murphy, he's got thousands. To me, and um, I got to tell you, I'm a recovering attorney, it looks to mm-hmm. me at the very least like negligent homicide. When is the Department of Justice going to investigate this because at the very least it is a wholesale deprivation of Mm -hmm. these residents rights Mm -hmm. constitutional rights Mm -hmm. is there an investigation do you have any idea that's going to take place and hold these guys accountable at the federal level, I, I do not. I know that Barr is looking at uh, different crackdown, uh, crackdowns on civil liberties uh, that are happening in these blue states because of the coronavirus. Um, and that the president issued what was now a couple weeks ago, the right 
for churches to reopen, calling them essential business. Uh, however, there are pending lawsuits in the state of, you know, in the state of New York. That's originally where I'm from. Um, that will that will percolate. I'm sure they will percolate up uh, to the federal level and that, you know, Cuomo needs to be held accountable for his actions and orders um, that did put the most vulnerable into nursing homes instead of hospitals uh, very early on that allowed the spread of this. And it, it was just a terrible call. And he's personally responsible for making that call. And I know that there are people in New York that are going to hold him accountable. The news media won't, but uh, individuals who lost their loved ones certainly will. Well, certainly DAs that aren't uh, of the same party, or even if they are, if you're a DA, and you see somebody who's responsible for 10,000 deaths between him and the commissioner of health. They're both attorneys. They both got to know these definitions. I mean, I'm not the only one. This is, uh, you know, I wrote an article called None Dare Call It Murder. I mean, they had, they had the uh, Javits Center Field Hospital. They had the uh, Comfort, that ship. Mm-hmm. And they had uh, a, a provisional hospital in a field hospital in Central Park Central and Park. one in Brooklyn. They mm-hmm. had four or 5,000 beds, and yet they sent at least 4,300 patients to go infect all these vulnerable people. And they're always saying, well, the good job of government is to help help the poor, help the, help the downtrodden, help the vulnerable. And yet here they look like they took steps to just eliminate them. Yeah. It's no, an outrage. you're absolutely correct. Yeah, it is an outrage. It is an outrage, right. absolute outrage. And it's a definitely a deprivation of their civil rights. Your right to life, your right to <laughs> it's a violation of the of the uh, standards for nursing homes, which the federal government has in place, dealing with uh, infectious diseases. They're not supposed to accept people, but yet the government of New York and Michigan and Pennsylvania, and New Jersey forced them to accept these patients at great, uh, you know, catastrophic uh, results from it. So I wish that uh, Attorney General Barr would really look into this, but I guess he's got his, his plate full right now. Yeah. I mean, this is something that will percolate up to the federal level. I have no doubt. I mean, if you just look at and if you look at the hypocrisy of these officials at the time, like Health Secretary Rachel Levin um, from Mm, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's health secretary removed her mom from care uh, when when this order went down in Pennsylvania because she knew she knew it was bad. So these officials knew what they were doing wasn't right. They acted in their own self-interest, got their family members um, out of these homes, uh, but allowed others that weren't in such a privileged position um, uh, to have their lives lost. It's absolutely abhor- abhorrent. Yeah. And and then uh, Cuomo says, well, I wouldn't put my mother in one of those places. Well, hey, you don't have to. You know, yeah. your family is very wealthy and you can let uh, Chris take care of her or pay for the pay for the private care. And I just found it abhorrent. And then there's no what really gets me, Kelly, is there's no remorse. There's no empathy. Like, Mm-mm. we had to do it. We didn't have a choice. And we regret the results. We really feel your pain. They don't care. And it's the same thing with closing down the economy, closing down businesses. I never heard Cuomo once say, we know this is a huge burden. We know some of you businesses aren't going to be able to make it, but we're there with you. We're going to do our best to make sure as many of you as possible can. They never said that. These people are sociopaths, Kelly. No empathy, no conscience, and no feeling of responsibility for the harm that they've inflicted both economically and through the disease. And for that alone, they need to be defeated and defeated soundly and roundly. I absolutely agree with you. And it's up to all of your listeners to go out in November and cast your vote, both, you know, for the top of the ticket, the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, all the way down ballot. Because if we've learned one thing um, from this pandemic is that local leadership matters. Um, A lot of, you know, especially in Florida, where, you know, DeSantis did put a lot of responsibility on the local electeds to decide when to reopen and when was safe to reopen. Uh, Local leadership matters. Um, And so we we have to remember that. So so vote up and down the ticket. Yeah, that's such a great point. And just to underscore that, we've got Comrade de Blasio 
The guy is a moron. Uh, <laughs> he is the worst of the worst. And we see we see the uh, consequences of it with the riots and the pandemic, the way that he's mishandled them both and cost lives and cost untold economic damage to people who could least afford it. Anyway, I won't uh, take your time any longer. Just tell us website, where we find you and how we connect with you on the web. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Kelly Riddell. You can also go to our website. That's www.a, the number one, a, p, a, c, dot, org for all of our latest updates and sign on to our newsletter. Um, and you can also follow us at Twitter at America First Pack. All right. Excellent. And any questions, comments for Kelly, please send me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. We will forward it off to her and our Twitter feed at Kerry Lutz. And of course, the website Financial Survival Network, where you can find this and everything else we've done and a link to Kelly's site and the pack as well. Kelly, can't thank you enough for coming on. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.